Lupus is a story about a dude named Lane. He moved to the mainland and bought one place to stay. And then one day he went and tried to rent them out. And then he became one real investor man. Hey everybody, this is Lane with the Simple Passive Cashflow Podcast. If you haven't yet, please go to simplepassivecashflow.com and go to the contact link. And make sure you sign up for the Hui Deal Pipeline Club. We're going to get a lot of deals coming through from multifamily syndications to some all private money lending deals and a bunch of turnkey rentals coming on there and a bunch of other cool stuff in the pipeline. So please go and sign up for that. You're going to have to do a little form to give me some information to let me know what you're looking for. But once you're on that list, I can start segmenting different deals to come your way. Today, it's just going to be me on the line. As you guys know, I have some passive cash flow coming in, but it's nothing huge. Because I'm pretty cheap, I'm getting pretty dang close to replacing my income at my job, or at least replacing the expenses that I have. A lot of people come to me and they pitch this investment or that investment, and I have my rules on investing that I can share in future podcasts. But one thing I do when I look at an investment is I do this thing called a SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T. That stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. I got this idea in my head to quit my job and to go to full-time real estate because I just find that I'm pretty good at networking and looking for deals and doing deals myself. As I mentioned before, I'm currently working on apartment syndications and looking for some investors on there to join me as a passive investor. To implement this SWOT analysis on my idea of quitting my job, what you want to do is you want to go down the list, S-W-O-T, and today I want to talk a little bit about the T, which is the threats. Before I start talking about that, here's a message from our sponsors. Not being one of the big boys in investing quite yet, aka the accredited investor in the eyes of the SEC, it's tough to find good options for investing. But then I started investing in the American Home Preservation or AHP fund, which is crowdfunding the mortgage crisis in America. The fund collaborates with existing homeowners to keep them in their homes. It's a way to make great returns while feeling good about making a social impact. After investing myself in the fund, it was awesome when they approached me to become an advertiser of the company. You can start investing with as little as 100 bucks, and if you want the free Burn Zone book, please send me an email to lane at simplepassivecashflow.com. Because of my podcast, I had a space to book appointments. And for all you guys know, I have a Canterly link on my website where you guys can sign up to talk to me and just get to know me and I can offer my guidance as best as possible. We talk about a lot of cool stuff. Everybody seems to have their story. There's one guy who says he got fired because prostitutes... Well, his boss was cooking the books and paying for prostitutes. The guy I was talking to, he just happened to be the unfortunate guy who got fired because they couldn't make the accounting work. Another guy mentioned that he was at work and he saw people getting fired like clockwork every year. And he would see the ambulance go by and he just didn't want to be the person who was let go the next year and to be in that ambulance. From the people that I talked to and, you know, myself included, everybody has that turning moment where we're like, No, we can't do this. We can't stay at this W-2 job and build somebody else's dream. And these are great conversations. We talk about how much passive income is required. Most will say they need about $3,000 to travel around and do cool things like take photos of their food that they eat. But others with families and a bunch of kids, it's more like $8,000 a month, all within the same realm of possibilities with real estate. I want to highlight that there's a natural inclination to leave your job. All of us are high achievers. We know what is easy and the beaten path should be questioned. You should stay at your job and keep doing this as a side gig is what I'm going to try and argue. But people always want to jump into entrepreneurship and it's really not a great idea or even needed. When we all mean entrepreneurship, I mean not dip your toes in but going all in. Like Gary Vaynerchuk says he sleeps 4 hours or Grant Cardone says 10 exit. Or how you hear people saying just burn all the boats, go all in. A lot of motivational speakers will tell you to dream big and to commit and go all in. By that fancy car analysis, you can set the bar up high and force yourself to achieve it. They don't know your situation, and oftentimes these gurus are outliers, and oftentimes they themselves did not follow the same advice. This is a survivorship basis. What you're seeing is all the survivors or the people who have made it through, and what you don't see are all the failures. For every entrepreneur who goes all in and even does it as a side gig, only a minority succeeds. To focus only on those successes is a logical fallacy. Despite a superior product and even optimal skill set, so many things can still go wrong in a business. 
You're not going to give your business what it needs when you're worried about putting food on the table and paying rent. This is called the survival mode. The survival mode causes two things. First, you're less creative in the survival mode. Outsource yourself as much as possible first. Hire the help first or you will be drowning in minutia. You will not be leveraging your time or your skills. This will require you to create a lean and efficient systems, which is about building a business, and it's all about this at its core. As Robbie Kiyosaki differentiates in his book, The Cashflow Quadrant, an entrepreneur builds a system that they can be removed and scaled, whereas an entrepreneur who does not build a system is just a glorified self-employee. The second, when you are in the survival mode, you are taking unneeded risks and making mistakes such as forcing the wrong deal or giving up excessive equity for exchange of VC capital or any down payment money that you may be taking in. As a side note, a big part of business is negotiation. In a negotiation, the biggest component is the ability to walk away. Not having a job and supplemental income source or cash buffer torpedoes your pillar to negotiate. You are effectively the emperor with no clothes, and everybody knows it. Everyone you deal with and your customers knows it. Just as any woman can spell desperation, everybody knows that you have nothing to back up your claim at the negotiation table. You should only quit your job once you can scale, and you should be the last part of the business that can't scale because you have a job and the business needs more of you to scale. You have to be the bottleneck. Don't dilute yourself into thinking you are the bottleneck because you just want to quit your job because it's some badge of honor. A lot of entrepreneurs just quit because they just want to tell all their friends and family that they told the man to F off, they don't want a boss, and they have escaped the 9 to 5 race. And I think in this society of all in, it's cool to be like, hey, I'm all in, I don't have a J-O-B. This is all an ego thing. And we need to be conscious when our ego is leading and we are not being logical. I spent a decade working my way up through junior level jobs, being a first level supervisor and managing professional teams, and learned a lot how a mature business works and interpersonal skills that I can put into my managing and leadership roles. I wish I would have had this mindset earlier, but I realize now that working for someone else is a privilege. You have this privilege to try things out on someone else's dime. You don't want to be trying something new when you're doing your own business and you got your own capital at stake. When you're at your job, this is the time to be trying some new marketing scheme or new leadership technique, not when you get your one shot at swinging the bat with your own $100,000 of capital. This is not the time to be finding your management style. When you step up to the batter's box and try to go big with your first big deal. Here's a joke. When you're at your day job, rub off the letters of your keyboard to use this as a time to master the no-look typing technique. Or just try something different because it might work for you in larger ventures, your own ventures. In conclusion, ask yourself, why am I wanting to leave? Is it because of ego or necessity? And have I acquired both the skills, proof of concept, and starting capital to create this runway for my business to survive? Only then can you truly leave your W-2 job, your security, to do bigger and better things and build your life and build your dreams. This website offers very general information concerning real estate for investment purposes. Every investor situation is unique. Always seek the services of licensed third-party appraisers and inspectors to verify the value and condition of any property you intend to purchase. Use the services of professional title and escrow companies and licensed tax, investment, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed as in every investment there is risk. The content found here is just my opinion and things change and I reserve the right to change my mind. Above all else, do your own analysis and think for yourself because in the end, you are the only person who is going to look out for your best interests.